Hi, I'm Lexi, I'm the Head Opinion Editor here at the Mancunian. I'm here with Hannah Mortimer, who's a Union Affairs Officer this academic year. Hannah, can you explain what a Union Affairs Officer does? A Union Affairs Officer does quite a few things. Um, I think a lot of my time is spent in committees. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is governance, which yeah. I was a bit surprised. How many committees uh, are you on? I couldn't tell you, but <laughs> I'm, in a, like, I'm in a few every week. Oh, wow, okay. Mostly. So, what does Hannah do? Outside of work, in work? Just in general. In general. <laughs> um, I come to work every day, I go home, I go to the gym, and then I go to bed. <laughs> nice. Okay, so there's a bit of mysticism around your role. Not that it's like a reflection of you, but I think people just don't generally understand what a union affairs officer does, especially because it's not called president. Um, so you probably have a lot of active pieces that are confidential, and you're dealing with the most like senior levels of staff at uni. So how do you deal with that? Um... It's not difficult, mm -hmm. I don't think. I think okay. the kind of like secret stuff is never like scary secret stuff. It's yeah. just like typical, oh, here's our plans for next year, but they're not finalized, so don't say anything. Okay, yeah. It's nothing crazy. Um, I actually really like being involved with the senior staff, mm -hmm. which I wasn't aware was part of my role before coming in. Oh, really? um, I think being a union affairs officer, you're so much, you're not very forward facing. Yeah. Um, you're very much behind the scenes a lot of the time. Um, Did you know I've... that when you were running for the role? No. Okay. So I knew like <laughs> I knew um, you sit in quite a few committees, um, and I did speak to Sam, my predecessor, yeah. who like caught me up on all that because the job description is so vague. Yeah. Or at least it was when I was running. Um, but I've really liked being the behind the scenes, kind okay. of just getting things done. In, in my own terms. Yeah. yeah, so there's a lot of confidential work. So do the other executive officers know, know what you're doing? Or yeah, mostly. Just... I mean, I've not had anything that I've had to like keep a secret. There's okay. a few like papers that I can't yeah, like, share yeah. with people, but yeah. everyone's pretty much up to speed on everything. Okay, that's good. Um, your role traditionally, and by other unis, is called president. So do you think that people understand what a union affairs officer like is? No, no. I don't. Because How do you feel I about feel that? Like I don't, I don't feel affected by that personally, okay. um, but I think because other roles have very clear remits, like yeah. a humanities officer, it's clear what yeah, that, that means, yeah. and activities and culture, well-being, etc. And then you look at other unis mm -hmm. who have a president and then vice president, welfare, vice yeah. president, education. Um, so it can be a bit like, oh, where do I fit in here? Yeah. Um, and I think there is still that kind of people outside of our union still have yeah. that misconception that, oh, I'm the gen sec, or I'm the president, and it's like, no, yeah. I'm just everywhere. <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah. called Union Affairs, but like, what other job titles come to that role? Do you know what I mean? I'm sorry. Can you so like, it's called Union Affairs, but what other job titles come under that role, like governor or? Yeah, so, I mean, you do a few things that every exec does, like be mm -hmm. a trustee, um, of the union, yeah. Um, but yeah, Union Affairs is also a governor of the university. Mm -hmm. um, this year, that's also along with city and community. I don't know if that will continue. Okay, yeah. But yeah, so trustee of the union, mm -hmm. governor of the university. I think that's about it. Yeah, big titles, yeah. senior titles. Yeah. Oh, you're um, the chair as well of the trustee board. Oh, wow, yeah. okay. In the Union Affairs job description, it states that a typical day for a Union Affairs officer might include Go into a student society event to find out what students want. How have you interacted with students over the past semester? I think there's been um, there's been a lot of stuff that's been happening at the university, mm -hmm. um, not the university, the union, okay. with societies. I think especially with cultural societies at the moment, we've yeah. done a lot of work with them and um, yeah. tried to kind of bridge gaps that students might feel with the university mm -hmm. um, and understand like how we can make students feel like they belong on campus. Mm -hmm. um, that's been a really huge chunk of the society work that yeah. I've been involved in. How have you done that? So I think it's a lot of it's come down to how well our team works at the moment. Yeah. So we are lucky that we've got an exec team that really gets along. Yeah, that's good. So Robbie, the, the um, society, kind of society's guy, mm -hmm. we love him, activities and culture. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so him and Tasneem have quite close relationships with society mm -hmm. members, yeah. whereas I think other people, myself included, didn't have those because when I was at university, it was entirely online. So mm, yeah, I didn't course. have any connections Were to the student body. Were you COVID year intake? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I came in 2019. Yeah. So. But um. it was like through our other officers that we've managed to be invited into those spaces yeah. and then form those relationships with those peoples and those okay. societies. Yeah. So it's like lots of officers work with students rather than just one specific officer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, could you explain the role of the association chairs? Like, who are they? What do they do? 
Yeah, so our association chairs cover like separate student bodies of students. Uh -huh. um, and as it kind of says, they form an association. So mm -hmm. people who identify with that association can get involved with those events. I know recently we had our trans association chair held kind of, um, I think it was like a crafty event. Yeah. Um, and it just invites those students into that space. How do the students know about the events though? So a lot of it is just advertising. So I know mm -hmm. like some associate some association chairs will be members of societies okay. or they'll have their Instagram and yeah. I might repost on my story, their SU Insta page will repost on their story mm -hmm. as well. So you get in contact with them via like social media mainly? Yeah, I do at least. Okay. Yeah. Do they like, do the association, the association chairs like send out emails to the student body in general or is that not really a thing? I'm not too sure. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> um, as Union Affairs Officer, obviously you said that a lot of the work is quite behind the scenes, like it's not quite as people facing as maybe people would expect it to be. Um, so do you think you have a visible presence on campus? I don't think so. No, is that like something that bothers you or? It's not something that bothers me. I think it's just not what I expected. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, I think so much of my role is and maybe this depends on how you shape it, but I mm -hmm. found like so much of my time is soaked up just being yeah, in committees. Course, yeah. And committees aren't just like an hour here or there. Sometimes it's like, like on Monday, I had investment subcommittee and finance committee, which was a full, the entire day. Oh, really? Yeah. Are they multiple hours committee? Like, yeah, some, uh, some can be an hour, and then it depends yeah. what's on the papers, what's on the agenda. Yeah, but, wow, yeah, that is very time consuming yeah. then. <laughs> um, and it's nice to see regular updates on your new SU Instagram. Um, what was the reason behind like the gap in posting between, I think it was maybe August to January? Yeah, totally. Um, being a procrastinator probably <laughs> is yeah, the first. top reason. Yeah. Um, I had like had this vision like oh, I'm going to do like weekly vlogs and I'm yeah, going to really yeah. promote like what this is about and I just didn't do yeah. it. And I think a lot of the stuff that I'm working on is a bit like long winded. Mm -hmm. So sometimes like it's difficult to give regular updates because yeah. I'm like, this isn't going to be completed within a semester. This yeah. might be like multiple years worth of work. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, but I should, I'm trying to post more <laughs> but regularly. But it's nice that you're back on Instagram. Yeah, so. I'm on the grind. <laughs> um, moving on to the executive team itself. So there's eight different roles with eight different officers. Do you think that the structure of the team works? I think it works really well. Mm -hmm. um, so I've spoken to like a lot of other SABs in other unions, yeah. especially ones of similar sizes, that kind of, Particularly our education officers, so the humanities, FE and HFC yeah. and PGR, like other unions will have one person in that entire okay. remit. And yeah. I'm like, how can you possibly yeah. understand what's going on in the engineering department? Yeah, that's a lot to and cover. the business department, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I think for our university where each faculty is kind of an autonomous school, yeah. there's no way that one person could cover that remit. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that allows like so much more productivity. So it's okay. not like, I don't feel like I have to cover anyone else's back unless like they ask for help. Yeah. So I think everyone really works well in their remit and it's split really clearly. Okay. So the roles are fit for purpose. In yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, and then how does accountability work between members of your team? Like, do you hold people accountable or is it all eight officers holding every single person accountable? Um, so what happens is we have a weekly meet and we'll give updates mm -hmm. on our priority areas and our kind of team priority areas. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not necessarily that we'll sit down and be like, you said you was going to get this done. Yeah. Where's the evidence? Okay, it's yeah. more like, oh, you're working on this priority. Where are you up to with that? Yeah. Do you need any help with that? Do you need to delegate yeah. any responsibility? So it's a bit more like pastoral than yeah. scrutiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Okay. But in, but it's still, it still holds you accountable because you know yeah. if you're coming to that next meeting, you're like, oh, yeah, I had this action assigned to me and I've just not done it. Mm -hmm. It's not that you feel like, sh like oh, this has ruined everyone's day. Yeah. But like, you know that you might just need to ask for that help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair. Um, are you personally in a position to hold like people to account as a union affairs officer? I think, I mean, it's not like part of my job description or yeah. anything. Um, and it depends what we mean by hold into account. But we kind of have like, for example, three different work streams, which mm -hmm. works on one separate team priority area. Okay. I'm the project lead of our cost of attending work. Oh, yeah. So if I've set an, kind of like an action to someone, then yeah, I'll be like, hey, did you get this done? Did you yeah. have this meeting with this person? Do you need yeah. me to do this for you? Yeah. Have you ever had like difficult conversations? Or... No, everyone's pretty good. Oh, that's yeah. good to hear. Um, moving on to impacts on students. Um, did you read my recent article titled, We're Still in the Cost of Living Crisis, Where's 170 Quit This Year? 
I saw the headline, but Did I haven't you? read it yet. I haven't yeah. read it yet. Get reading. I need to. Um, <laughs> last year, there was a cost of uh, living payment offered to most students, which is what my article was about. Um, why has this not occurred this year? Yeah, so exciting. This is literally okay. like my whole remit is just cost of attending work. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I also got the 170, lovely bit of cash in my pocket. Mm -hmm. um, fabulous. But I said this during um, like my election period, whilst I very much appreciate that 170, it wasn't sustainable. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. it paid for a week and a half of rent. Yeah. And then after that, I was buggered again. Mm -hmm. um, so loads of my work has been more sustainable, long-term financial support for students. Mm -hmm. um, so for example, like one of the biggest issues is for people who live in uni halls is the price of rent. Yeah. Like nobody can afford it. Yeah, no. um, so like I've I've kind of like really put pressure on people in charge of that to do something about it. Yeah. And the way we've kind of like tackled it is it's not gonna be that the university is gonna turn around and be like, yeah, we'll cut our rent by 50% because that's like never gonna happen. Mm -hmm. um, but we're trying to set up bursaries specific for yeah. rent. Yeah. So yeah, that's not 170 quid in your pocket, but it might be two grand off your entire rental cost. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's When do you see really the bursaries exciting. like coming to fruition? Like, when will they be implemented? So the bursary discount on rent, mm -hmm. the rent discount bursary, <laughs> yeah. um, we're piloting that, I think, next academic year. Okay, nice. Um, I might be wrong on that. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also stuff outside of that, like the Manchester bursary. Mm -hmm. So. That, kind, that um, committee had no student representation on it, which I thought was really bizarre. Yeah. Like, the, your whole remit is to help students, but you've yeah. got no perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so it took me six months of being really? like, please let me on this committee. Please <laughs> let me on this committee. Yeah. Please let me on this committee. <laughs> um, and I finally did get on it. We had our first okay. meeting like last month, and I submitted a paper to be like, students are really poor, and you don't understand the extent to this. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we've put in together a paper as a committee to take to like the highest decision making body okay. um, to say like we should be increasing the threshold yeah. at which students are eligible. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think students will access the bursaries? Like, how will they know about the bursaries, and then how will they actually be able to like get a bursary? Yeah. So this is a bit of a hot topic right mm -hmm. now because accessing university if finances is one of your barriers, yeah. but you don't know that you're eligible for X yeah. amount of criteria yeah. um, for a bursary, then you might just never end up applying. Um, so we are doing work with the university to kind of make bursaries uh, a thing that people know about upon application yeah. rather than just, like when I was at uni in my first year, I only heard about the bursary because someone I knew got it. Yeah. And I was like, I literally can't afford my rent, why don't I get this bursary? Yeah. <laughs> um, which is like kind of what's triggered me so much to work on this kind mm -hmm. of remit. Um, but yeah, like things with the rent bursary, for example, yeah. I've tried to say like, when this does, come to fruition, like it should, every hall that is eligible for a discount, mm -hmm. it should be there like at the point of application, Yeah, you could be eligible for this discount. Yeah. So that students are actually aware of it because there's so much, there is so much financial support at this university mm -hmm. that you just do not know about. Yeah. Like, so like at point of application, do you mean when students are applying on UCAS or when they've actually like accepted their offer to study here? Um, I think the sooner the better. Yeah. If it's UCAS, it should be there. If you're yeah. choosing between living at home versus moving to Manchester because of finances, yeah. you should know at point when you're first considering it. Like yeah, it should agreed. be the, some of the biggest information on like accessible to anyone who's either already here or is thinking of yeah. coming here. No, agreed. Nice. Um, so you wrote a statement with Nancy Rothwell called Standing Together Against Hate. What was it like to write a statement with Nancy Rothwell? Um, it was very chill. Was it? <laughs> yeah. It Where was... did you do it? So it wasn't like we sat down in a room and okay. like put our heads together. It was the, the university comms team was like, will you agree to be on this statement with Nancy? Mm -hmm. And then we looked at like what that statement looked like. Okay. Did we want anything added? Yeah. Um, so who wrote the statement? So I don't know the name, but it was the university comms team. Mm -hmm. And then, but like, it wasn't like, this is a statement, sign yeah. it. It was like, have a look over it. Do you think this is okay? Like, yeah. what's your perspective? And then our comms team, myself, the university's comms team would just like back and forth a little bit. Yeah. And then. How much did you add to the statement? Like, how much did you change? It, well, it was a very um, kind of, it wasn't a detailed statement. Mm -hmm. It was his support offered. It yeah. was, you know, quite, strip back yeah there wasn't much to to change um mm -hmm. i just said as long as we've like highlighted support that students yeah. can get which was already the point of it yeah um yeah there wasn't much 
mm. interest and stuff going on. Would you have gone about it differently if you'd done it like just by yourself? Or yeah, so when the uni when our exec team did it, it mm. was um, like it was from us. It wasn't from yeah. our comms team. Yeah. Obviously, we had their input and their yeah. perspective. And legally, what can we say? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I don't know if it would if it would have been as bare bones. Okay. Um, maybe it would have been a bit more fleshed out. I think the thing was like I didn't know particularly exactly what kind of mitzvahs would apply where mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And it was like yeah. one of those things that we learned as we went. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'd say if you like compare the exec one. Yeah. And the university one, and the exact ones changed. Like our comms on on yeah. on stuff like that has been more of a fluid thing rather than here's a piece of paper. Okay. Um, what do you think the student response was to the like to your signing against together against hate statement? Yeah. So it was. I didn't have any like particular feedback. There were some emails mm -hmm. that were like, oh, I've received I've received this email because I think it got emailed. Out. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, like I, I'm not like this doesn't apply to me. Like this isn't relevant to me. Why have I been sent it? And okay. I was like, don't worry. This went out to everyone. Yeah. We're just trying to reinforce that you know campus is real space. Yeah. Um. I think some people weren't happy that it was apolitical, but mm -hmm. the university is never going to take a political stance on something like that. And it was something that was in collaboration with the university, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of what sparked us getting conversations going in the union with yeah. societies. So yeah. that was like we're here with you and we are a political body and we can enable you to campaign on whatever it mm -hmm. is that you need. Um, yeah. yeah. With the conversations with the, with the societies, was that between like the exec team and the university senior team or was it just between the exec team at the SU? So it's a mixture. Both okay. of those conversations have happened. There's been more like informal conversations just in a side room yeah. um, offering like what support they need. Um, how to how they can get more involved with campus life, mm -hmm. get stalls set up, and they're all like societies that run stalls really regularly mm -hmm. are always really fabulous and really engaged anyway. Yeah. Um, but we did also have um, more for formal um, meetings with kind of our like response team mm -hmm. at the university, more more members of the senior leadership team, um, and that was well mostly so that students could get their perspective to the university because okay. it might be difficult without kind of being yeah. brought together by someone else, i.e. Yeah. yours. Um, so yeah, those kinds of conversations have all been happening. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that enough has been done to support students who are affected by the ongoing crisis? I don't think anything is enough. Okay. Um, what would you do, like, what would you do otherwise? I think all that, the things that we've been doing at the university, which is allowing that space for campaigning, allowing mm -hmm. that space for democracy, which is like the crux of a union. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, and having those like difficult conversations, difficult debates in yeah. our union in our union assembly. Mm -hmm. um, those kinds of like active. I need to like share this perspective with the student body. Those are one way we've looked at it. But it's one of those. It's one of those horrific. Things that what what can be enough? Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll leave that one there. Um, so to round up, in the lead up to MCR, I think it'd be quite nice to hear about like what you enjoy about the job. So, what are some of the best bits of your job? Um, this is a really boring one, but I've really <laughs> enjoyed like being in those like big decision making committees. Okay. Like yeah. knowing that like oh, if I'm sat in a room with people who. Maybe like, like if I say something and it sparks a conversation, yeah. and I'm kind of like, was this not obvious? Yeah, it's like, oh, I did something today. <laughs> like yeah. I can leave that room. And so like, do you feel yeah. like that room doesn't really have a student input otherwise? Like if you're the one who has to spark the conversation? Yeah, definitely. Really? Like it, it just is. Like that's the reason that yeah. the union affairs officer is there, or whichever officer is yeah. there, is for that student input. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the time, it's like older people who mm. went to university a couple decades ago, yeah. a few decades ago. And to sit down and be like, actually, students don't care about that. Or yeah. to be like, actually, yeah, you really need to be putting more effort into this. And like knowing that that's stuff that students have told me or like from my personal yeah. experience, it's like a very um, fulfilling yeah, feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, that's nice to hear. Um, and what's the worst part of your job? The same. <laughs> it's such a like, like, if you, 
so like going into that room for the first time mm -hmm. is really odd like when you're yeah. with these like really senior members of the yeah. university that like you've never met before yeah. it can be really difficult to be the person to like challenge someone with like so much seniority yeah. who's had like years of experience in higher yeah. education when do you feel like you got comfortable doing that like was that a few months into the role or was it just um, kind of from the get-go it depends there's like so with my role you'll have regular one-on-ones with mm -hmm with the VC, with the COO, mm -hmm. with the head of student experience. And yeah. it's really easy for you to get familiar with those people. Yeah. So when you're in a committee with those people, it's easy to yeah, be like, I already have these people, yeah. like I'm a bit more yeah. comfortable. But in other committees like finance, where I have no finance background and mm -hmm. I don't meet anyone yeah. there, like regularly, it's a bit like, <laughs> yeah. um, what does all these numbers mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then to finish off the age old interview question, are you going to rerun for um, Union Affairs Officer? It is the age old question. I've actually <laughs> not decided. Okay. I, might, um, I might put my name down yeah. and just give myself the space to think. But yeah. it's really difficult because there's like stuff that I'm working on that I really want to like be the push one to through. see it through. Yeah. Like the, the cost of attending work that I'm doing, like mm. I'm so passionate about it. Yeah. But then on the other hand, I'm just. I'm kind of like, I don't know if it's time for me to move on into a different area. Okay, yeah. But we'll see. Yeah, we shall see. Well, best of luck if you do. Thank you. And thank you for joining me here today. It was really nice to chat to you. Yeah, you too. <laughs> thank, thank you. you.